Welcome to Love Central. Love y'all. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Lord. You know. So, um, you know, part of the, I was thinking, because I was, I was joking with Sherry earlier about, I'm going to give her a mic and ask her to sing. But here's the thing. See, Sherry takes pictures. I can't do, I don't know how to do that. They, they do. I, I can't do what you do. You can't do what we do. But you're, whatever it is you do for Jesus, it's the same, it's as important as what anybody else does. Anything you do to the Lord, the Lord is the one who keeps score and keeps count. Don't worry about, oh, I didn't do, no, no. You just do what your hand finds to do. You just do what you're supposed to do. Somebody asked me, say, well, I just want this ministry. I, I want to do that. I'll say, what are you doing today? What are you doing today? Because if you'll do today what you know you need to do tomorrow, will take care of itself. It'll just open up. I mean, first thing you know, you don't know, can't keep up with it. Gregor and I love the story in the, when it talks about Jesus preaching. And he uses a boat. Whose boat did he use? Peter's one. Peter's. Lord, here am I. Use my boat. Mm. What we give to the Lord. He just, he just longed his boat. So he said, just so I can let the people hear what I have to say, my teaching. What you give to the Lord. And he said, Peter, launch out into the deep. I think today the Lord's saying, will you launch out launch with out. me? Will you launch out in your love for me? Will you launch out in forgiveness? Will you launch out in your faith? Mm. Believe in bigger? Will you launch out? And then Jesus said, throw your nets over. And of course, Peter threw. You know, he said, we fished, but he threw over one. But because he... Just let the Lord preach from his boat. There was a net breaking miracle right there. And I'm telling you, if you'll let Jesus use your life, there's a net breaking miracle for you, your marriage, your family, and everything that you have. But it's when we selfish and says, No, I just want to use my life. Those that give little, receive little. And I'm talking about time. I'm not talking about money. That's the least. That, I mean, anybody. That's right. That's, the, that's the easy. I think the Lord knew if you don't trust him with your money. Because, you, you know, because I have to trust him with my life that I have mm -hmm. an eternity. I have a home that he's prepared for me. And I want him to live comfortably here on earth so I can live comfortably My with God. him in heaven. That I can just step out of this body and be present with him. We're his children. We are the sons and daughters of God. We already have a glorious inheritance. All the promises are yes and amen. What are you not selling out for the yes and amen? Because that's the compromise. I told Greg, I said, anytime the Lord, I'm in the Word. And he, what I love, he gave us 66 books for us to know him. And really the New Testament, so we could see Jesus, so we could see him. And I said, the Lord every day just says, Jackie, I just want you to launch out a little deeper. Mm. I got a blessing if you'll just launch out a little deeper. <laughs> I got a peace for you if you'll just launch out. <laughs> I've got joy for you if you'll just launch out. Yeah. There's things that you don't even know about as you launch, as you trust me. And I'm just telling you by the Spirit of God, God's saying to you today, launch out. Launch out. Don't stay stuck in the rut of where you're at. Launch out in the name of Jesus. And all you have to do is say, Lord, I want to launch. That's right. All you have to do is tell him, Lord, I'm on the launch. Here you don't am, have Lord. to figure out your launch. No. You don't have to see how deep the water is. You just have to be in the boat. That's it. He knows how deep the water is. He knows where you need to go. 
He just wants your sail up. The Spirit of God will blow on your sail and take you where you need to go. But the way, the way I see our sail up, the way the Lord directs us is this. Yeah. It, now, the way the Lord can't direct us is this. He can't direct this. In other words, uh, it's me. I'm on, it's my decision. No, no. He can direct yieldedness. He can direct thanksgiving. So the Bible says to, and what I want to talk about today is, 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 and Jay, if you feel like playing, please, boy, I like that. Y'all like Jay playing like that? Oh, dear God. Just keep on playing. If you feel like it, if you're okay, just, if you get tired, you quit. Yeah. Somebody give you some water and all. So today we want to talk about really what kind of warriors we are. We've been talking about the wall, the wall, stand on the wall. You've talked about Nehemiah. You know what kind of warrior we are? We're word warriors. Everything that you know, everything that you see, everything that about you was created through words. God created the entire world by words. Jesus was created by words. Mary said, so be it according to me, according to thy word. Everything in your life, so you're either a word warrior or you're a word warrior. I'll say it again. You're either a word warrior or you're a word warrior. Now, a word warrior is warring, is letting the devil be their captain. But a word warrior is letting Jesus, because Jesus said, John 6, 63, the words I speak to you are spirit and life. And they said about Jesus, never has a man spoken like this before. That's what was the, that was the difference. Never has a man spoken like this before. I've noticed this about Jackie, tell you the truth. My words to her and my tone to her makes all the difference in the world. You know, she spoke something to me this morning that made me feel like I was 10 foot tall and bazooka proof. Had nothing to do with physical, had nothing to do with nothing else. But she said something to me that blessed me, that really went into my heart and blessed me. And so I told her, I said, man, what you said really blessed me today. But she, know what had, what, you know, she didn't write it. She said it. And it really, I don't know, you could probably tell, I'm, you know, I'm walking a little better. You know what I'm saying? But she said something to me. That encouraged me in the Lord. Something in the past, actually. Not even something today, but something in the past. So whatever you're saying, your words are changing everything. Your words are changing your life today. Your words are creating your future for tomorrow. Now, listen to this. I'm going to go ahead with Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. Say, I'm going to imitate him. I'm going to imitate him. And walk in love. Jackie talked about love. The walk in love. The greatest offensive weapon there is. As Christ has also loved us and given himself for us. So when I read that, I read it over and over. And then I read, I said, and walk in love, imitate God and walk in love, even as Christ has also loved us, loved us okay. and given himself for us. So actually, that's my mannerism. So my mannerism should be, you want to know, so how do I imitate God? So, I walk in love, and as Christ has loved me and given himself for me, I'm to walk in the love and give myself to everybody around me. Does that make it simple? You understand it that way? So that means that you agree with everybody, but it doesn't mean but but you don't have to be disagreeable and ugly and argumentative and mean and get an attitude and get mad and sad and get blow your little cool and that doesn't pay good. That doesn't pay good dividends. Isn't, isn't it amazing when you walk in love because we're the ambassadors of heaven, which is the ambassadors of love. So when we're walking in that love walk, we don't even realize there's a lot of shaking going on. A lot. Things are being shaken by the Spirit of God because that is your faith in action. Uh -huh. That is your faith moving. So shaking in the spirit realm is going on. Darkness is being backed up. And it might be crying out with a loud voice. That's Darkness right. Darkness might be yelling. It may be yelling. Yeah, because it doesn't like the love. But what you do, just keep pressing. Keep on moving. Just keep going. Keep on. Just keep on going. Because what does that, when you're walking in that, you're not glorifying you. 
you're glorifying a glorious, good, good Father. Mm -hmm. You're glorifying the Savior and Lord of our life, Jesus. Your love walk gives glory and honor and praise to the King. That's why the enemy is always wanting to trip us up to get out of love. Right. And our our main thing is to check our barometer. Am I in love? Yeah. If anything, you go away today. Think about, am I in love? Am I right. in the love of God? Is my tone show that I'm in love? Is yes. my attitude show that I'm in love? Is my actions show that I'm, I'm living holy, walking holy, and being in love? The reason Jackie has on her boots today. I'm building. She's building. I'm she building. continually builds her life of love. It doesn't quit. you how many people are on vacation around July the 4th? You know anybody? Everybody vacates. You cannot vacate from the love of God. There's you can't no go vacation. home and say, I know it was good at church, but I'm telling you, you're just mean than the devil. <laughs> I'm you vacating. can't go home and have a bad... If, if you go home with your mate and they go to acting out, say, listen, let's call the pastor. <laughs> he's, he's got a word for you. He's got oil. He's, he's bringing his oil over you here know, to our house tonight. His word's to going to be green, but... shut up and be kind one to another, tenderhearted, <laughs> forgiving one another. Watch your word. Now, let me read this to you about words, if I may. This is Proverbs 18, 20 through 21 in the Message Bible. If you don't think words count, say, I think words count. Amen. Say, I think words count. I think words count. Does anybody in here speak words? Everybody speaks words, don't they? Okay, this is uh, Ephesians, uh, I'm sorry, Proverbs 18, 20 through 21 in the Message Bible. All right, let's just turn around here. Words satisfy the mind as much as fruit does the stomach. Anybody like pineapple? Peaches? What's your favorite fruit? Somebody shout it out. My God. Is watermelon a fruit or vegetable? I'm kidding. I don't know. (laughs) Either way. As much as fruit does the stomach. Watch this. Look at this. Good talk is as gratifying as a good harvest. You ready? Next verse. Words kill. Hold on. I want to stop right there. So we think... Guys, let me just go there for a minute. We think we're married. I'm just good to the married guys now. We think we're married. We're going to get a romantic response because we go in grumpy. Your words better be cool and calm and collective. Your words go first. You know what she's going to do? <laughs> Run. Run. You don't have to agree with that. Just be quiet. So, words kill. Okay, here we go. Words give life. Now, here's the last thing. They're either poison or fruit. How how powerful are words? They're either poison or fruit. And now, says, what does this thing do? It says you it choose. It says you choose. Okay, I think everyone should close their eyes. And if you know you have spoken death words, the curse, curse words. And I don't mean cussing. I mean words that was not the harvest that you want. I want you to just say, Father, forgive me to yourself. Don't you say it out loud. Father, forgive me for speaking death instead of life. Instead of life. Lord, I'm choosing to plant a harvest of good and life and words of heaven. Put a guard over my mouth, a guard over my mind, a guard over my heart, so that I'll speak life, I'll speak life and not death. And not death. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And God forgives you that quick when you ask him to from a sincere heart. That if you've spoken hard words, harsh words, words that you really, you know, Gregory and I met with a couple one time. And they came up and they were uh, in a lot of, he was speaking a lot of death words. 
So it was after service, and they met with us up here. And he was saying some stuff and all that. And I said, okay, let's all hold hands right now. And he said, well, I said, let's hold hands. I'm getting in agreement with the death that you're speaking right now. And I'm believing that this death harvest comes really quick. Now, all at once, you know what that was? It was like a slap in the face because he thought, I don't want that harvest of what I have just spoke out. I am crazy. He said, pastors, I don't want that. Well, change. I said, okay, I can't speak for you. Your mate can't speak for you. Your children can't speak. Your ball. You, you are the one that chooses life or death. And you, you will stand responsible for what to harvest you eat. So all at once he said, I repent. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Honey, I'm sorry. I, I See, when revelation comes and you think, why did they keep speaking that? Because not enough of us have got the revelation that we are really ambassadors of heaven and we are really creating life or we're creating death by the words that we are speaking. When all of y'all get real, real, real happy and can't get any better where you are, I'll quit talking about words. Until then, my heart will go on singing. Until then, I'm not changing. Because it's because the gospel. Because we got to get words. Is what, where you, turn to Ephesians 1.17, if you would, please. Can I go there, love? Ephesians 1.17. Because I want to talk about where you are seated and where he, Jesus is seated and the kind of words you speak. Heaven's words, you get heaven's results. You speak hell's words, you get hell's results. You speak curses, you're going to get curses. It's just that simple. And yet, you know, we wasn't brought up, most of us, wasn't brought up to put a guard over our mouth. You know what? Most of us heard our parents cussing or heard our parents just going off crazy, heard our parents saying anything in the world about something or somebody. And so that got imprinted and implanted in us. That is not Jesus. And that will not get for you spiritual things you will stay in a bind and until you get that rid of that and forget it and let Jesus in the word wash it out of your mind and you begin to say what the uh, heaven's saying over you and your situation you'll continue in where you were and you'll continue in that curse it, Jesus delivers us from every curse but your words and the words of the past if you're agreeing with them will carry on with you I'm preaching better than you're hollering. It's up to you to stop it. Say, say, I choose. I choose. I, I choose. choose today. I choose today. Now, here's the prayer that, 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 that I pray for you. Prayer I pray over myself for 40 years. And I'm trying to do better. Wherefore, I also, after heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. My God, you can have the spirit of wisdom and have a revelation of the knowledge of Jesus. Wow. Yes. What are we after? Well, you know, God's just mysterious. No. He's just got God's ways. He's mysterious in all His ways. We'll never find out God's ways. That's such a lie. He reveals things to us by Spirit. Amen. Says who the Bible says, "Who knows the mind of the Lord?" Then it says, "But we have the mind of Christ." Hallelujah! This is the mind of Christ. The yes. Word God's not a mystery. He, Christ is the mystery revealed. Yes, that's the mystery that Christ has revealed, and now we can live holy, walk holy, walk free, have what God heaven yes. has. Yes. But we got to get in agreement with heaven. Yes. And you know, watch this. Jackie and I, in agreement, it says that a husband and wife, when they're in agreement, that not one of their prayers will be hindered. Wow. I can confess that that's the truth. I'm just trying to make my prayers bigger at the moment. Verse 18. I'm going to some place with this, so hang on with me. And I shan't be long. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of His calling. By the way, you don't have a ministry. He does. 
He ministers through you. Yes. I, I don't want to yes. sit under your ministry, to be honest with you. I much prefer to sit under His working through you. Yes. Somebody shout amen. If I'm amen. A, yeah. So, the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. You'll be, know what is the hope of His calling. What's the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints? The riches of the glory of what is my inheritance in the saints. Glory to God. Meditate on that for about 1,600 years. Verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe? Yes. According to the working of his mighty power. Verse 20. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him yes. at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Now, where is Jesus sitting? At the right hand of the Father in heavenly places. What is he over? Far above principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Now, hold it right there. Don't leave me. Say, say I'm going to stick with you, Pastor. I'm going to stick with you, Pastor. All right. Now, then I want you to jump down to verse 4. Yeah, it's 2 4, then we're going back up to 22. Uh, Ephesians 2 4. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. If you got your Bibles, follow with me or write it down. Don't act like you don't, not a Bible scholar. Don't look dumbfounded. Did y'all follow me in that? Ephesians yes. 2 4, and then we're going to go back to, up to Ephesians 1 22. But God. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. Even when we were dead in our sins, hath quickened us together, yes. together, together, yes. together, together, together. Together means together with Christ. Together with Christ. Woo! Has raised us up together and made us sit together yes. in heavenly places in Christ. Oh, what did I read up there? What far did I read above, over there? Far above principalities and powers. He's, in verse 20 says he set him at his own right hand. Then where does he say he set you? At the right hand. Where are you seated? In heavenly places in Christ. Far above what? Principal all principalities, principalities all, all powers, powers, all, all dominions. dominions. Why would we whimper? Why would we not say the enemy's under our feet? We're winners. We're winners. Why would we say I can't control my thoughts? Why would we say I don't know what to do? Why would we not say the Bible says, the Word says? Yes. The Bible, Jesus is called the Word of God. His name is the Word of God. So don't you reckon that we better be serious about the Word of God? Is His name is the Word of God? Jackie's mm -hmm. name is Jackie. Am I serious about Jackie? If I call yes. Jackie, will she come? If I call Jesus in his word, don't you think it'll come to you Ooh, and accomplish what you want it to accomplish? It will come. Ooh, uh -huh. What are you calling? What, what are, are you calling, calling on? What are you depending on? Who are you on? calling on? What Ooh. are you declaring? Now, here's a good way to know that. What are you receiving and what are you living Ooh, in the middle of? Yes, yes. You can have what Jesus said you could have if you call it his name. Yes. And you're calling on his promises. His word, yes. Jackie's promise is, she loved me like the rock of ages. Her promise is, she loves me. She cares for me. She adores me. She respects me. She loves my looks. Because she loves my cooking. <laughs> she loves me. You know why I love him? I have a covenant with him. You got a covenant. Because I am a covenant child. Come on. And I have a covenant with him because that covenant's strong. Because why? I first have a covenant with him. Come on. My covenant with Jesus makes this covenant Woo! more Glory powerful. God. If I don't have a covenant here, then most people think that a marriage is a just a contract. And when you get tired of the contract, you can slip out of it easy. But when you know you have a covenant, I'm in covenant with him. And I love this. Whenever you, if you are on your first, second, third marriage, when you just say, okay, I'm in covenant. Yeah. Then, then God makes whatever this is covenant. Now that's what our God can do. Because he is forever faithful. He will never drop uh, the covenant. Glory to God. He will, it is already signed, sealed, and delivered by the blood hey. of the Lamb that all the promises are yes and now amen listen. and your enemies defeated. I got a word for you. 
If you want to know whether or not you're imitating God and walking in the presence of God and experiencing and enjoying and believing that you're seated at the right hand of the Father with Jesus and knowing that you're enlightened and the spirit of revelation knowledge of Him is, you'll have blessed God joy. Because if you don't have no joy, then you know for sure because Jesus said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. He said, the joy that I have, I'm giving unto them. Yes. So if you don't have no joy, guess what? You're not really meditating, regurgitating, and uh, ruminating on the Word. So You know, you as, say, well, I don't know. I'm just, no, no. Go to dealing with what the Word says woo. about you. Yes. Get your identity. You know, oh, my yeah. daddy, I, I told my daddy when I was about that tall, I said, daddy, I'm nervous. He said, boy, you don't know what a nerve is. Shut your mouth. <laughs> Then I, t- then I told him one day something about worry. He said, oh, you don't know worry. Then I told him one day I was bored. He said, I'll fix that. He f- fixed that boy. Jesus can fix yeah, all that Jesus too. He can fix all that he kind of stuff. Yeah. But look, what is coming out of your mouth? What are you giving God the right or the enemy the right to work on? If you're confessing, oh, my God, I've just had all of this. I, no, no. You go to confessing, my God, I can do all things through, through Christ, Christ who strengthens yes, me. Yes. I don't know why God's got me in the middle Ooh, of this. It I'm feels here. like a mess. I might not be enjoying it like my flesh wants to enjoy it. But God said that whatever I do, he, to watch over, he, that whatever I put my hands to, he would bless. Ooh, and he's going to bless this, glory to God. And then the first thing you know, what's going to happen? Glory to God, you'll find yourself in another place. You know, the thing is, he is the rewarder. He is the rewarder. Of those that diligently seek him. And when you seek him, I seek you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my strength, with all my soul, with all my might. I seek you. And he says, Jackie, I'm going to add everything you need because you're my daughter. And you've got it right. As you seek me, that means I'm your source. And if I'm your source, there is no lack in the kingdom of God. There is no lack in heaven. We are not of this world. We are passing through. But our citizenship is here. And I just can sometimes I say, oh, Gregory, just like Jacob saw that ladder of those angels bringing things down, bringing things up. Oh, I see the ladder. I see God bringing things to me. She does. Can you see the Lord bringing blessings to you? That's your spiritual eyes. I see the blessing of God coming to me because my eyes are looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith, and He is writing. Lord, lift our vision. Lift our dreams. Let us dream again. Let us dream again in the name of Jesus. Thank you for supporting this gospel of love. 